next week we will get working on that soft tissue work. So have yourselves a great rest of your week and see you later. Bye. What's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Move Better Mondays. This episode was supposed to come out about four weeks ago, but I got it tied up with a bunch of stuff with some work clients. Uh, we have a big hole in our wall and they're digging a hole, a trench outside to kind of fix up some leaking issue that we had. So putting all that together, it was basically just a hectic last three to four weeks and I wasn't really able to kind of put something together that I thought would be good enough to kind of give this uh, episode the uh, time and energy that it really needed because it is such an important part of this entire shoulder pain uh, I guess kind of path we're gonna be going on over the next couple of weeks so today is going to be an interesting episode but I wanted to mention that if you haven't seen last week's ep uh, last week's episode I'm sorry I already forgot what week we were last episode last episode check it out I'm gonna link it right above here Definitely head back, take a quick look at that one because it ties into what we're doing today and it's going to explain a lot of the concepts behind shoulder pain because I'm not gonna really get into all of that today. I would highly re recommend doing that and getting back over there. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please click that button below, subscribe so you can be updated on the next episode, which is gonna really be where we're gonna be starting to get a lot of movement and some mobility stuff and then eventually get to those activation exercises and build on that shoulder movement. So. There's three episodes that are gonna be coming up on this that are all gonna be playing a huge part in shoulder pain and building shoulder stability. Now, it doesn't really matter where you are along the entire process. We wanna make sure that we don't leave anything behind. We don't wanna to have to double back in about three weeks and then be like, oh, well, I didn't know that I was completely missing this. You don't want that. You wanna make sure that you start from the beginning, do it well the first time and get through everything properly because you never really know what the issue may be until you really scan through everything and notice what the problem is. And it doesn't mean that if this problem comes back again and this shoulder pain comes back again, that it is going to be the same thing that is causing the problem. It could be a lack of mobility. It could just be something that you did. It could be tons of different things, but there's no reason why you shouldn't do a clean sweep because it really only takes what you're gonna to see today is about five to maybe 10 minutes of your time to put yourself through. So what I will be discussing today is the spine. That's going to be our major point of interest today. I want to make sure that we focus on the spine because that's, let me just get a spine for you. Okay. So the spine, basically not the entire thing, but just this upper portion here where it starts rounding this way here, which is basically that upper back area. This is where we're going to be concentrating a lot of our attention today. So what we're looking to do is create some movement here so that instead of our spine being rounded forward, which is usually the cause and kind of the starting point, if not almost like a symptom that kind of comes with uh, shoulder pain is going to be one of the major issues that we're going to have to deal with. So I want to make sure that we kind of clear up this area here. Once we've cleaned up all of this, then we're gonna be able to kind of create a nice, stable and neutral position, a neutral spine, so that our shoulder muscles can actually move properly and support and move everything around well, and we're not gonna be running into that shoulder problem like we've been doing all this time. So, for today's episode, we will need a lacrosse ball and a foam roller. Nothing crazy, this doesn't even have to be a lacrosse ball. You can really get away with a tennis ball, baseball, uh, those orange hockey balls. Anything that's going to be kind of solid, hard enough so that you can put a little bit of pressure into it and uh, release some of the tissue. The other thing we're going to need is a foam roller. It doesn't have to be something crazy. It doesn't have to be really expensive. It doesn't have to have spikes on it. It can be nice, smooth. This is just one I grabbed off, our, off the rack over here. It doesn't really matter which one you get. You just need one. I almost took my head off doing that. So once we've gotten the foam roller, let's get right into the next part. 
So now that we've got our foam roll in our hand and we've got ourselves on the ground, the thing we need to do is we need to start working through the tissue along each side of the spine. Now we need to remember, there's, there's something really important about foam rolling that you need to remember. If you roll a joint, it, nothing's gonna happen. And if you roll the spine specifically, you're probably just gonna irritate everything along the spine and you're not gonna be able to touch anything on the side because the spine's gonna be because the spine's gonna be pushing out and the muscles are actually gonna be further in. So you're really just gonna be rolling the spine and not really releasing the tissue on the side. So there's a couple of things we need to make sure that we're paying attention to when we are rolling. And that's why I told you when you do get your roller, make sure that it's flat. You don't need the spikes because that's gonna cause you to always hit the spine every single time you're doing this. So basically what you're gonna do is, so remember that we're not gonna be on our spine and then we're basically gonna start from our spine and then turn and tilt off to the side. It doesn't have to be really dramatic because then you're gonna be missing the muscles completely, but it just has to be about you know five to ten degrees just off you're gonna notice that you're not on your spine anymore because if you're lying straight you're gonna feel the pressure right on that bone as you start rotating you're gonna notice that the pressure is relieved and all you're gonna be doing is getting the outside or basically the muscles that are going up and along the spine so what I like to do and I highly recommend you to do this is wrap your arms you don't have to bear hug yourself but just wrap your arms across your chest what that's gonna do is that's gonna wrap the muscles and kind of expose a lot of the area that's there and not basically kind of keep you all tense and tight as you roll. It's going to allow you to just kind of relax the muscles, get the arms to be unweighted and from here you're just using your legs to lift your butt up and then from here just rolling back and forth along that muscle. Make sure that you obviously get both sides by rotating and going to the other side. You don't need to do this right now, I'm not going to run you through this. but. Basically, that's gonna be the first step. And what you're gonna do is essentially just treat it like you would any other muscle. You're gonna spend about uh, five minutes, I'd say at the very most, rolling your spine. Anything more than that, it's really just overkill. And essentially what we're doing is we're moving very slowly. We wanna do about one inch per second. It's my rule, it's my, you know, the rule that I've been using for the last three or four years now going through every single area of that muscle very slowly to make sure that if there is anything that's a little bit more sensitive, we spend a little bit more time working out that area. Now what you're gonna do is you are going to grab your lacrosse ball and you're gonna need basically just any wall, any flat wall that you can get right up against to get the rest of the muscles worked out. So. Now that we've released all of the muscles that are along the spine, so basically traveling up and down through that spine, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be getting the muscles that are attached to the shoulder blade and that are actually kind of guiding the shoulder blade. Now, as I mentioned, the shoulder blade is essentially that bone that's gonna be traveling around the upper back. That's what's kind of dictating where the shoulder is gonna sit and how it's gonna be moving. That's almost like our compass. If it's not in the right place, we're not in the right position to start. And if it's not moving properly, it means that other muscles aren't working well and we're gonna be leading ourselves into the path of pain. So getting those muscles released is not that hard. What you can do is grab your, grab your lacrosse ball, grab your tennis ball, baseball, whatever. Basically from here, I'm gonna be placing it around the mid back. So if you can notice right around there, and all I'm gonna be doing is starting from standing position, I'm just gonna sit myself down. So sliding that ball up and closer to my neck and then standing back up. And all that's doing is I'm basically coming off the spine a little bit further. So when I was on the ground, I will be touching those muscles when I am on the ground, but this is really gonna be working through that area. So for me, someone like me, like I'm very tall and I usually sit slouched over sometimes when I'm working at the computer. So this one's a big one for me and I'll like to get through these muscles as often as I can. So basically just sitting and standing and I'm breaking apart those muscles in that area that is gonna be basically between the spine and that shoulder blade. And now those are really dictating a lot of the movement from that shoulder blade rounding forward. The next group of muscles I'm gonna to wanna to get are gonna be in the upper shoulder, so that trap area. That's where a lot of you are gonna be carrying a lot of your tension, which may be caused by the shoulder issue or by that lack of movement in the spine or it may just be stressed so you're going to really enjoy this one i'm pretty confident with that what you're going to do is grab the ball right from the center of the spine and what we're going to be doing is i'm going to be standing basically facing away from you guys and i'm going to ro rotate my body towards you and that's going to make the ball travel out to the side which is going to get all of that muscle that's up there as well 
So again, placing the ball behind me, and from here, corralling my arm. I didn't mention that in the last one. You wanna grab your arm. What that's gonna do is that's gonna release all that tension in the shoulder. It's gonna allow your shoulder to kind of sit back, relax, and just kind of enjoy this entire process as much as you can. So from here, rotating my body towards you, I don't know if you really noticed that that well. You might not be getting that from that angle, but basically the ball is moving closer towards you and subsequently right to the edge of my shoulder and I'm gonna be rotating back and forth. Now, one of the areas that you might be feeling a little bit more pain in or a little bit more tension, it's gonna be up in the shoulder area. If you notice something there, again, spend a little bit more time, work that area out. Don't be afraid to just kind of let the ball sit there. What we're looking for in this case is a mild discomfort. We don't wanna be driving the ball in. We're not looking to kind of break apart and actually create a significant amount of pain. We just wanna create a little bit of discomfort that's going to allow our body to kind of release that tension that might be built up in that area. The next muscle we're going to be targeting is going to be the front of the chest. So what you're going to do is you will need a corner. So I don't know if you can really see this because it's literally all white, but I'm going to be using the corner here and I'm going to be allowing myself to get my arm to kind of swing out and forward. That's going to allow me to move my arm throughout a bunch of different movements that's going to kind of release that tissue area and kind of expose some areas. So what I do is I place the ball right here. What I'm looking to do is go from the shoulder, come down on an angle like this, and I'm gonna be placing it just off the bone. It doesn't have to travel right into the center, just off the bone here. This one muscle that's gonna be in there called pec minor, that bad boy is really gonna be hanging on for dear life to stop you from pulling back. If you give that muscle an inch, it will take a mile. So be sure to really pay attention to this one. What you'll be doing is grabbing your arm, placing it in here, and then as you do it, you're gonna be moving your arms. So instead of you moving the ball around into circles like that and making movements, you're gonna be placing, applying pressure and allowing your arm to do the work. So you're gonna be going in and out through different patterns. So going up and down, out to the side, down and back. What that's gonna be doing is that's gonna be releasing the tension that's gonna be in that muscle that is probably gonna be keeping you in this tight pinched position. The better you are at getting yourselves from here to here, the higher the likelihood of you being able to build on that later on and build some proper movement. So that's going to be completing up that movement part and basically the mobility part of, not the mobility part, but the soft tissue part of, of that pec. Now let's get into creating some movement at the spine if you do have some restrictions. Now that we've done that and we've basically released all that muscle around the shoulder, what we can do is we can actually start trying to create some movement at the spine. Sometimes when we do uh, get into that situation of shoulder pain or shoulder lack of movement, the spine usually can get restricted because it's going to be trying to hold on and stabilize for muscles that aren't able to stabilize. So quickly what you're going to do, this is going to kill me. I'm literally going to be like half breathing while I'm doing this because I usually struggle with this one a lot but you are going to place the foam roller back to where you had it, basically in that mid-spine area. For, from here, we're not going to be rolling along the spine. What we're going to be doing is using the spine as kind of a, a kind of a pinpoint where we're going to be wrapping our body and moving through different positions along that spine to kind of create some extension, which is basically that straightening of the spine. That's going to allow you to sit up a little bit taller. So release the muscles, allow us to get to this point where we can extend and then once we've created some movement now our body is actually going to be able to hold on in that position so releasing extending our body is going to hold on and this is what we're going to carry over with us into the next episode which is going to allow us i'm really getting comfortable now which is really going to allow us to be able to keep the body in a nice stable position then start creating all kinds of movement out in the shoulder and get rid of that pain so Get yourself lined up on the roller from here. Cradle your neck, support your neck, and what we're gonna be doing is just very gently extending our back over. This is where I can't breathe and can't talk anymore. And then coming back forward, we're gonna be sliding the roller a little bit higher and then repeating that exact same thing. So keeping yourselves in this position, wrapping, extending, going as far as we can and then coming back forward, sliding it down, and doing that again. So what you're gonna be doing is creating different anchor points. So basically, as 
we move our body further and further down, we're releasing different segments of the spine that could be causing the problem. Because we don't really know where the limitation is. It's very hard for you to self judge, especially when you don't have, you know, super awareness of where your spine is and which segment usually I really haven't met anyone that's ever been able to really know exactly where it is. So what you do is you take this completely scan through the whole thing, release each segment of that spine as best you can. And that's going to be allowing you to do to that's going to be allowing you to get your body into that nice straight position. So for this, you're going to be doing about two to three times at each different segment. So you notice that I did one and then moved. What you could do is stick it one, do it a couple of times, move up, do it a couple of times, move up, do it a couple of times. This entire process, this entire process, the entire thing all together from start to finish where I'm going from basically doing some uh, soft tissue work to rolling around my spine to extending my back over to releasing the front of my pec and everything that we're gonna be doing, this entire process really shouldn't take more than about 10 minutes at the very most. And in that 10 minutes, you're gonna be creating a significant you're going to be taking significant leaps forward in creating mobility and proper movement at the spine. So if you guys like the episode today and you guys want to make sure that you don't miss next week's episode, hit that subscribe button. I promise it's going to come out next week. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys really liked it, hit that like button. Leave me a little comment to let me know what you guys think, obviously. And I will see you guys next week.